honey from the rock. <laughs> you know, it's, it's the sweetness of God. It's the kindness of God. It's the goodness of God. It's the friendship of God. Just say, hey, man, have some of this. Bam! And he just fills you up with this goodness. You know, I started remembering the honey glory liquid cloud that I, I, I entered this honey glory cloud for like two hours and I had like about 12 visions back to back and the understanding was there for most of them. I didn't understand, I don't understand one of the visions that I had it was this, this angel and the baby thing. I don't understand that, but I saw like all these other visions and I would just open my mouth and then boom, like the understanding would come. I didn't talk about the little the angel one, but I'm just cutting off the pastor who's trying to lead a prayer meeting. <laughs> Uh, man, I just forget sometimes that there's like protocols and stuff like that. And that that honey filled my mouth. I, I, you know what I think that is? I think that's just grace for God to speak through his body. You know, when we just receive his goodness that's led us to repentance, he becomes that, that coin in the fish's mouth. We just open our mouths and his testimony just flows out of us by faith, leading others to him. You know, there's no one more sweet than God. It's literally like that honey cloud was like, I could step out of it and like, okay, wow, I don't feel the presence right here. I'm going to go back in now. <laughs> we just go back in and I'm that, I don't know how to explain it, just the power presence the peace the love all that you know god is would be swooping through my entire being and like wow and i look up and pfft, visions jesus is standing there and a dove flies out of his hand there's living water pouring down to the earth and then you know and i, pfft, I come out of that and like pastor jesus is going to pour out his spirit through his body living water is to water the entire earth it's gonna be like yes the days of knowing and it's like, and they're like, okay, Chris, thank you for that. Uh, and Lord, we pray for, you know, and they just try cutting everyone off. <laughs> and I, I'm like, wow, I, I can step out of this thing. And I, just, I step in and it's just like, oh, I'm back to my regular, like, you know, not feeling very spiritual at all. And then I'm going to go back inside and I'm, I step back in. Visions open up. I see a broken tap and all this water's coming out. And like, oh, it's all about brokenness and letting the rivers of God pour through you. Pastor! <laughs> you know? And I went on for like two hours. These visions, and these revelations of just being, you know, he can grind you to powder, but if you fall upon him, he'll be broken. What is that? It's like a horse. You don't have to tell, you don't, he's not wrestling with you. You're just fully yielded to him like a broken horse. Like a broken tap. You don't shut the tap off. You just let the water pour through. If it floods the place, oh well. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be like in the scriptures about surely that live, say the Lord, the whole earth is going to be covered in the glory of God like the waters come to the sea or something like that. Waters, living waters, drowning everything. Like the days of Noah, putting to death the deeds of the flesh. Hallelujah. Just because we're all broken. We're just yielding to our God. <laughs> sweetness of God, the kindness of God, the love of God that leads us to repentance. And you just, the more you experience true repentance, the more you want to repent. I used to pray, God, please, if, if there's anything you want to reveal to me, I'm wide open. I'll take any, I'll take a rebuke. I love rebukes that are from the Lord, from the flesh, not so much. It feels demonic, actually. Everyone wants to correct you when you're walking in the glory. <laughs> All the natural minds like, no, 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 that's not the way we do it. Oh, no, 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 you're breaking our forms and traditions, and then they try to correct you, put you in the little box. You know, what, what happened in the old to that guy in the Old Testament? He tried to touch the box. You know, <laughs> God was in a box in the Old Testament. They put, it, you know, Uzzah or whatever his name is. He touched the box and tried to adjust it himself. <laughs> you know, the hand of man trying to. Control the glory, so to speak. <clears throat> Smoked. Dead. <laughs> Only dead men can actually walk in the glory. You gotta, I mean, it's okay. You can walk in the anointing first. You, like, God will anoint you when you open your mouth, your testimony will come out. But the whole, the glory, that is, a, that is something I walk in very seldom. 
because it is terrifying. <laughs> I've stepped into these realms where it's just like this horror and dread comes over you. Like it's like the spirit, the fear of the Lord, but it's Him. The atmosphere is so holy that just one wrong thought and you would be obliterated. And I don't even think mankind would even recognize that you disappeared. Would God even recognize? That's how much power is in the room. I've only experienced that about, I can count on one hand, where the glory was so strong. It was terrifying. One was at a Kevin Prosh worship concert, whatever you want to call it. The second one was at this man Bob Edwards meeting. His face turned into a ball of light right in front of me. It was during those meetings that I was so terrified. I tried to stop. My knees were shaking. I didn't go to the bathroom. <laughs> I tried to hold my knees and my hands would start shaking. That's how scared I was <laughs> from the holiness of the Lord. You know? <laughs> You're like, oh God, come, come. Now, of course we want him to come, but he only comes in tiny measures. It's like being, like, you know, the sun, the big ball of fire in the sky. When we feel it's warmth, like, oh, God is here. You know, like, so, to, you know, figuratively speaking, we feel the presence from a distance. And it's like, it's so strong. It's like so hot. Like, wow, the presence of God is so thick today. But it's only a tiny measure of Christ. Compared to, like, standing 100 feet from the sun, you'd be obliterated in a second. Well, that's what it felt like. Like, I've been in the glory, well, I don't know. <laughs> I've been in the presence, I've been in the anointing, I've been in the peace, I passes all understanding. But this was a whole new level that terrified me in a good way. It was the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Where it's just like, you just, you give everything to God right there. You don't even really want to talk. You don't want to move. You just want to like, there's peace. There's love, but I guess it's just, I don't know what it was, man, but there's way too much power here. <laughs> there's way too much power here. You know, and I, as far as I know, nobody died in that meeting. <laughs> I think I might have died to myself a little bit more because <laughs> we go from glory to glory. <laughs> but those are levels of glory that I've not experienced. I've never experienced through anybody else since those days. I mean, I, sometimes I get I get so like drunk in the glory and I can't get off the floor. But it wasn't that, it wasn't like that those days. Those phew, power. I remember just yelling in tugs, worshiping God with everything. I'm, you know, someone was saying uh, on my Facebook, oh yeah, something about I pray that God will give you encounters. I know that you have cat encounters and stuff like that. I was like, man, you have no idea. You know where the encounters come from? Worship. I would say that 90, 85% to 90% of all the encounters that I've ever had with God came when I was worshiping Him. Whether it's just feeling His presence or just whatever. And I don't have a lot. You know, you want, there's other way more mature, like Todd Bentley, go watch his stuff. That guy, I started, God wanted me to follow his ministry in the early days when he would just be talking about his relationship, he would say, okay, open up your belly and release the glory within you, and boom! The whole room, the whole, the meetings that we were in, the presence of God would sweep through the place. And if he can do it, we can do it too. And he would talk about all these angelic encounters in heaven, and I would get hungry, and I'd go through the Bible with God. I'd say, God, how come you took e, uh, <laughs> Elijah up to heaven in a chair? You walked with... Enoch, you sat face to face with Moses, and I would go through all the scriptures crying out to God for how come you gave all these people encounters and look at me you said you're no respecter of persons God, what about me well if you did what they did they surrendered their entire life to God, of course you're going to experience the living God you know, they didn't live for themselves they lived for something they saw far off, a city who's builder and maker is God. They live for Him so they can dwell in that city with Him for eternity. And we've been translated into the kingdom of light. And we sit with Christ in heavenly places that we can experience the living God. 
tons of people. I would just listen. Like there's thousands of them on the internet. I can make an entire list. <laughs> you know, Jason Westerfield in his early days. You know, Brandon Barthol, Red Letter Ministries, Todd Bentley, Paul Keith Davis, Rick Joyner. You know. All these men of God have experience with God, the living God. There's tons more. David Hogan. All these people. And they're, it's not like God chooses someone in, who's in a five-fold ministry. God chooses someone who worships Him in spirit and in truth. Because I'm a nobody. I'm not in like some weird ministry. Or anything. I just love Jesus, man. <laughs> and if I could have it, He's probably just told me to make these videos because He knows that I'm an idiot. <laughs> In the flesh, man, you should see the way I'm around at my house. I play video games. That's what I do. I play, I play video games and listen to audio Bibles and pray in tongues. <laughs> I don't, I'm not laying hands, you know, on multitudes and, you know, if God could do these things through me, He could do it through you easily. You're probably even way more equipped than me. <laughs> All I got is like an audio Bible and the Holy Ghost. Oh, uh, anyway, they ran out of time. My videos only go to 47 minutes, and they got cropped. So I'm going to go do is worship the Father some more in spirit and in truth. And uh, it's not for encounter. It's not for visions. It's it's just to surrender everything to him. Give him the worship he desires. Uh, yeah, it is kind of for encounter because I, I love him, and I want to be with him, you know. <laughs> All right. That's the video for today. I hope you've been stirred up just to go spend some time with God. Cause that's what I'm gonna be doing. Hallelujah. Well, hello there. I'll turn this down. I'm standing in my portal. <laughs> Sometimes a portal appears here and the manifest presence of God. One day it stayed here for like there was an open heaven in this one area for four days straight. Like I would just go to the bathroom and wash my hands and be out of the presence and I'd come back and stand in front of the computer and the presence of God would just go kaboom. <laughs> I just did some uh, some worship because the atmosphere was disgusting and instantly within, a f within like a few minutes the heavens opened up and the demons got scared of Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh man. It feels a lot better in here than it did about uh, 40 minutes ago or so. I'm uploading that video right now if you want to watch it. It's probably the one that just appeared after this one. Uh, it's just me just worshiping Jesus in my heart. There's one part in there that says if the stones cry out silently, so will I. Um, that's, that, that really touched my heart because uh, sometimes we don't even have to use words. Like we can just, we just put our hand on our heart and we just go into the most holy place through the precious blood of Jesus by faith and just to be with Him. God knows everything. God knows all of our prayers before we pray them. He knows all the pain before we experience it. God knows everything. And sometimes it doesn't even take words. It's just like the deepest prayer is just a groaning which cannot be uttered. Holy Spirit. <laughs> um, sometimes you could just put, you don't even have to put your hand on your heart, but sometimes you just put your hand on your heart and you just look at God in utter dependence, in utter adoration or hunger and thirst after righteousness or just like, I'm experiencing something. Hold on right now. Some of you, like your ears, you can't hear what the Lord is saying because you're, you're listening here. He does speak here sometimes. I've heard him speak audibly like very few times, a couple times. <laughs> but he usually speaks right here in the heart. And uh, what opens your ears to hear, remember Jesus, he who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. It's just simply having a tender heart. It's simply being like John the Beloved, who had a lot of revelation. He heard what the Spirit was saying. 
because he would put his ear leaning against Jesus' heart. He could feel physically the heartbeat of Jesus, the rhythm of heaven. And it just like his heart was probably just pouring into Jesus' heart how much he loves him. It's so bizarre. Like even human love, like all, all little kids used to irritate me until I had a kid. And now when I look at little kids, sometimes I feel a love just pour out of my heart onto them. And other people around me can sense that. It's funny. It's neat. I like it. Love will actually heal you. Unconditional love. I remember just laying in my, like on my bed with, I had a dog named Coco and he, he, I, I trained him wrong. I didn't have any understanding. This was a long time ago. And, uh, he pooped on the floor and I rub his nose in it. I thought that's what you're supposed to do. Like, don't do that. No. And then, uh, I, I, I know I'm, I didn't, I learned later that you're not supposed to do that. That's just what I saw other people doing when I was growing up. So I learned from flesh. <laughs> and that's, it's, that's not the right way to train a dog. You train them by paper training or take them outside or whatever. And, uh, but anyways, I actually showed this dog how to go to the bathroom by I peed on a newspaper in front of him and he, he got it. <laughs> he figured it out. But before this, uh, I walked by my dog and uh, this other prophetic person was with me at the time and, and uh, he said, oh, I think Coco thinks that you don't love him. And I, and I felt that come from the dog. Him, like, I felt like, you don't love me. It felt like he was saying that, but he didn't say that, but he might have said that. I don't know. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. So I, I remember just one time I was, I was laying on the bed. Like, I made me feel horrible. And I was just laying on my bed, and my dog jumped up on the bed with his, you know, <laughs> like that. And I just, my heart was actually hurting physically that day. And my dog's right there, and I just, God's my witness. And I just reached over, I just gave my dog a big hug. And I just let the love in my heart for the dog just flow into him. Human love. <laughs> this is nothing spiritual, this is just maybe spiritual principles, I don't know. And I instantly the pain that I felt in my heart, which was physical from probably eating too many Doritos, it left my heart. It's like love heals. The uncon God, for God so loved the world that He gave. He gave His love. You don't think that the Father loved Jesus like with everything? He gave His best love for us as a sacrifice to be punished brutally executed, destroyed, all the sin, nature, go upon him. Like it was terrible and natural, but it was also viciously terrible in the spirit, even more so than what happened to him physically. Could you imagine all the spirits of rape, depression, anxiety, horror, fear of death, everything just went on Jesus on that cross when he hung there for six hours in agony of spirit and in agony of flesh and soul for you for me and Paul had the revelation that I'm convinced that neither life nor death nor angel nor principality nor power nothing can separate us from the love of God and where did he put that love? in Christ Jesus our Lord God gave us His unconditional love, and that unconditional love is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And it's known by just surrendering your love to Him, what actually heals you. <laughs> love doesn't seek itself, it seeks for the other <laughs> to be built up. And that's why I, I'm never alone, even if I feel like I'm alone or something, or even... It feels like everything's turned against me. I'm never alone. I have an entire kingdom <laughs> of God within me. I carry a principality of peace 
and all the angels and seraphim and cherubim. You think like so, it's way out there, but it's actually deep within me. It's written that God has placed eternity in our hearts. Man, there's a wonderful presence of God here. So if you're struggling with love or struggling with, you know, the battle, the battle is the Lord's. But the way you win is you just focus on Him and not focus on the battle. That's why the worshippers would go ahead of the army of Israel or whatever in the Old Testament. They weren't focused on the battle. They must have been pretty scared, maybe. But they were worshippers. They sent the worshippers ahead to fight the battle. Because this is, I think that's why I named the the video that's back there. This is how I fight my battles. That's the first song that comes on. And I was in a battle before I even started that video. The pits of the demon coming through the floor and the atmosphere of the neighbors. And so I had to be like Paul and Silas and just worship God and set them free. <laughs> Scared the hell out of the atmosphere. And literally that's why I'm, I'm in this piece right now. And that's why I decided to make another quick video just to talk about just surrendering your heart to God, surrendering your time to God, surrendering your mind to God. It helps all those little arrows and things of the earth or anything of oppression, depression, anxiety or any fighty, anything that would come against the revelation knowledge of God, you can cast it back down by looking to your, the author and finisher of your faith, but, but not with just your mind, like you put your emotions there, that's your soul, you know, your will, your mind and your emotions and your heart, your heart's already with Christ if you're a born again believer, right? Because your spirit, you've been baptized into the Lord. You can literally behold God through a pure heart. Uh, I, was, I heard in an audiobook a couple days ago that someone was eating the tree of life, and Jesus said, the like fruit from the tree of life, and Jesus said, like, that's the Father's love, that's your daily portion, so to speak. And if you abide in this love, you will never fail. And that just jumped out to me. It's like, man, that is how we overcome the world. It's the unconditional love of, of God because the love has fake love. It ha I mean, the world has conditional love. They'll only love you if you meet the requirements that they set out for. <laughs> it's like the love of God, He doesn't pull away His love just because He sees flaws. And he sees inconsistency, inconsistencies. He's constantly pouring out his love. But the problem with the world is that it's written in Scripture that the God of this age has blinded the hearts and the minds. But that veil is taken away in Christ. Because that's where the unconditional love of God is being poured through. He's the door. The only way to get to God the Father's unconditional love and receive it is, wow, it's through Christ Jesus, our Lord. He's the door, literally. It's a two-way door. God pours through Christ Jesus, through our hearts, into the world. But we could also pull others out of the fire. Not through us, but we introduce them to Christ in us. <laughs> but He's also Christ in them when they receive Him. It's hard to explain. I, I, sort of get, I sort of understand it, but... I'm sort of struggling with my words right now. <laughs> that's okay. I struggle a lot with my words. And... But uh, that's one of the things, too, that I want to talk about is, like, you kind of wait till you're totally perfect before you'll step out and do something in faith that you believe God wants you to do. No, that's not it at all. Or else we would, we would never do anything. We would never allow God to do anything in our life if we had to wait until we've arrived, so to speak. When I was worshiping, I was looking at, uh, I, the fridge caught my eye. And it was like, these imperfect, like I'll show you. Like, this is my daughter. She colored this. And you can see, like, I don't know. It's not fully shaded properly. She's gone out of the lines. It's not perfect. But you know what? I put it on the fridge anyway. Because my daughter did that. And it, it just shows me the stages of her growth. And I love 
my daughter, therefore I love what she does. I love her drawing, how imperfect it is. It doesn't matter. It's like she has a place in my heart. And it's like God, like no matter how imperfect we are, our praise is not the best. We might sing out of tune. We might even just like miss it all together. But when He sees, He looks at our hearts. He doesn't look at the outward things. He looks, are they hungering and thirsting after me? Or are they just trying to perform? And when He sees a hungry heart, He fills it. Because it's like hunger, be, you have to be hungry to be filled with righteousness. And Jesus Christ is our righteousness. And He just fills the hunger in our hearts. Or else our hearts would not be hungry for something else. Or else we wouldn't go to drugs and alcohol. Or we wouldn't go to, you know, sex and, you know, adultery and, you know, all these other temporal, the Bible calls it uh, the pleasures of sin for a season. Moses didn't partake in the pleasures of sin for a season. There is actually pleasure in sin and pleasure to your flesh, but the end is death. The fruit of it is death. Holy Spirit, it feels good in here. And, uh, whoa. <laughs> So all I'm saying is like the unconditional love of God is available in Christ if we would just set our affections there. It's the same thing I said in all my videos probably practically. We just sometimes we need to be reminded <laughs> that yeah, it's not so much the words we speak, it's just the heart connection to God. You know, if we don't have love within ourselves, which is the love of God, we're like noisy irritating drummers smashing cymbals and just we don't have the rhythm of God it's the rhythm of the earth and psh, 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 like a drum solo that's out of time with heaven love is like the most important it heals you and it, it's how you overcome the world I mean Jesus even at when he's you know, sweating drops like blood because of what he's about to suffer for the sake of his Father's love desiring us to come into glory to be with him. And he, he counted the cost and he's like, yes, it's worth it. He would, he would do that just for one. Just, just that... Just the Father's intent. You don't have no idea the Father's intensity of the love of God for one soul. It's like <sighs> heaving. I talk is cheap. You have to see Him for yourself. How much He loves you. How much He loves even the your enemies, if you consider them flesh and blood. <laughs> you know? You know, we know our true enemies are not flesh and blood, but they are principalities and for dark forces and wicked spirits blinding mankind from encountering God, who basically, he di He's done everything possible for us to come into glory, just to be with Him. But we get distracted by the world, and we want to do all these other things, and sometimes you don't even need words. Honestly, you just like... Like those, like those rocks. If the rocks will cry out in silence, so will I. Man, that touched my heart. It's like, yeah, I know. Just sitting there in silence, just pouring your heart out to God. Sometimes those words are louder in heaven than they are on earth because they're not even spoken on earth. But they are heard in heaven because God searches the heart. God looks at the heart. Then... Those words are heard louder than someone screaming, God, I need you. God, where are you? God, but his heart's not engaged in it. It's just a bunch. He's just frustrated. God still sees it, but he's looking intensely at that person's heart. If it's being poured out for him, how much does the heart need God? Or is it just in the mind? There was a woman pouring out her heart to God. Samuel's mom pouring out her heart, heart to God, just crying out to God. She looked like a drunk woman before Eli, the priest, that year. I don't know if he's a high priest or a priest, and, but 
he basically rebuked her. And then she's like, no, 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 you don't understand. And then basically, and he, he said, okay, well, blessed be the Lord, made the Lord unto you or whatever. I can't remember what he said finally, but the point is, like, the reason that he rebuked her and he didn't understand is because the lamp was going out when, in his days. He was going blind. And he would sleep in his place. But who was born was this, this child named Samuel. I might be getting the stories mixed up or whatever. The point of this is, this little boy named Samuel, I said that he would sleep in the Lord's, like in that place close to the Lord. And uh, because, oh man, I'm just going to read it. Where's my Bible? Hold on a sec. Show. It's important. This is 1 Samuel chapter 3. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the Lord of the Lord was precious in those days, and there was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time, when Eli was laid down in his place, that part jumped out to me, in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. When we abide in our own place and not in Christ, we begin to lose vision of Christ. But look look at this little boy here. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, that was never to happen. It is written that the, that the lamp is never to go out. And the ark of God was... Uh, out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. That the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. And he ran to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou calledest me. And he said, I had called not, lie down again. And he went and lay down, and the Lord called yet again. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go and lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went to lay down. Uh, in his place, and the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak, for thy ser servant heareth. And he basically gave him the word of the Lord. Uh, just hold on a second. And Sam I want to skip to verse 15. And Samuel lay until the morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. <sighs> that is usually what happens after you hear the word of the Lord. You keep your gate, your gates are wide open. Fling wide you have the gates and the King of Glory will come in. Because you, you have the substance of what God has given you. And your job is just to keep your gates open. Keep your heart open. Keep your spirit open to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Sometimes I'd be sitting at a movie theater and God would just drop something on me. So I'm looking for the Word of the Lord at a movie theater. I'm looking, I'm walking down the street, looking at nature, and God will just drop nuggets into my spirit as I'm just walking with God in the cool of the day, in the natural realm. But I'm constantly looking for what God is saying because my heart... And my affections are set on, set on things above. Even though I'm walking on the earth below, my heart is above in Him. But anyways, oh, hold on. Uh, Samuel lay until the morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. And Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he answered, Here am I. And he said, What is the thing that the Lord hath said unto thee? And I pray thee, hide it not from me. God, do so to thee, and more also, if thou hide anything from me, of all the things that he said unto thee, and Samuel told him every, everything, every wit, <laughs> and hid nothing from him, and he said, it is the Lord, let him do what seemeth him good, and Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did, not, did let none of his words fall to the ground, now, I've always wondered if, 
Is that like the Lord did not let Samuel's words fall to the ground? Or Samuel did not let any of the Lord's words fall to the ground, but he faithfully spoke it? I don't know. Uh, I don't know what it is, but if God's if God's given us something, even in our imperfection, he was just a little boy. If God's given you a download, why not share that? Don't let any of the Lord's words fall to the ground. I know the scripture says that every word that he speaks, he will, he'll perform it, what he sets it forth to do and whatever. But I've also had, hold on, this, this, this thing, okay, Holy Spirit. I missed God one time, and I was sitting on a bus, and I was going to Tom Lee to look at electric guitars, and I, as I'm looking at this man sitting down on the street, he's a street person, and I go into a vision, like while I'm sitting on the bus, and I'm, I, in the vision, I feel the presence of God, and I'm talking to this man about Jesus, and I buy him a slice of pizza. And then I just I come back to myself and I, I thought maybe this is just my imagination. Maybe I just made that up. I don't know. Because it seemed like my, it was in my imagination. It was just like just something that I just made up. But the presence of God was there. That's what makes it different. When God's showing you something, showing you a vision, it seems like it's almost your thoughts, but it's the mind of Christ revealing His will to you. And I was like, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't feel like going over there and talking to this guy about Jesus and buying him pizza. I want to go play some guitars before the Tom Lee closes. So I went to the Tom Lee store, and as I'm walking, I'm starting to feel grieved. I'm like, man, I should go back. Oh, i got to get there before they close, you know. And I'm walking, and, and I'm really starting to feel grieved. I'm like, oh, man, oh, I feel so grieved. I don't understand this, but I'm just going to go to Tom Lee and play some guitars. I just gotta let I just gotta let this feeling get off of me, or you know. I made a huge mistake that day. I went into Tom Lee. I'm playing the guitars, and the grieving kind of lifts off of me, and and I drop one of the guitars and cracked it on the bottom, and then the guy, everyone comes running over, and it's like, it's okay, just go, just go. And they kicked me out, and then I remember the guy. And, it's like, man, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. Just, I'm gonna go to a prayer meeting. <laughs> man, I, hey, there's, there's grace to grow. I get on the bus. I'm feeling so grieved again as I think about that man. I'm feeling very grieved, and I've seen him before on the streets. I've just, I never talked to him before. And I go to this prayer meeting, and I'm, I ask for prayer. I'm like, I, I, and I feel so grieved, man. I was. I felt like I was going to go talk to this guy and buy him a pizza. And I'm talking to the pastor about this. And I'm feeling really grieved. And I'm that dull. I didn't understand that I grieved the Holy Spirit by disobeying Him. And then I realized what happened. And uh, But I could not shake that grieving feeling. It was horrible. It's like, it just, it's the worst feeling in the world. When you realize, especially, that you just grieved your best friend. And I'm like, oh God, forgive me. I should have obeyed you. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back. I went back there so many times. I've never seen that man again. I used to see him at that spot all the time. I think he might have died. And if someone... He might have died not knowing God. I might have been that man's last hope to hear about Jesus Christ, but I chose my own will over God's will. Out of ignorance, thinking, well, maybe it's just my imagination, maybe I'm not ready yet, I need to grow in the prophetic more. Sometimes we just need to grow up and step out in faith with the, the little that God's given us. And just trust Him that it's Him. And uh, I never saw that man again. I'm, I don't even know if he's on the planet anymore. I've never seen him there. And he used to be there a lot. And uh, man, 
That, that's the first time that I know that I've ever grieved the Holy Spirit. And it, it was, I was grieved for a couple of weeks. I could not shake it. I, I, felt, I felt condemned. Uh, I know that wasn't God doing that. And, but the enemy, enemy comes in there and instantly, Oh, you grieve God. You're going to hell. God's not going to forgive you. That man's in hell because of you. And all, the, all these thoughts of condemnation and... Ah! So sometimes... We just need to pick up our crayons and just paint. Just create and release what God's put in it. It's like that talent. That guy that buried his talent. Like we all have the testimony of Jesus, don't we? Why don't we have we have little nuggets that God's given us to release? But so many of us are fearful to release what God's given us. Because we grow up in a in a culture of like step if you step out of out of the boundaries of the religious system, you get speared to death by religious people. And there's a fear to step up, you know? At least that's what I grew up around. And uh, so I would just encourage you, just step out in faith. Just trust God. How do you spell trust? R-I-S-K. <laughs> and if you make mistakes, just be humble about it. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just practicing how to hear the voice of God. I just, I might have missed it. You know, I'm, I'm still learning. I'm, a, I'm an eternal student of God Most High. But Samuel here, I mean, uh, little baby Samuel, he did hear the voice of the Lord, and he, he had, a, he had, he had the same thing. It says he, Samuel lay until morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord, and Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. You know that fear that comes? It's a real fear. But sometimes we need to step through our fears just to pull others out of the, out of the fires of hell. Then Eli said to Samuel, and you know, he, he told him. He stepped through his fears and he told Eli what happened, what the Lord said. By faith. He didn't even know what the word of the Lord was. He thought, he thought Eli was calling him. That's how it is in the beginning. We, we screw up, but we keep... The righteous may fall seven times, but he gets back up again and keeps walking with God. And I just want to keep reading this. And he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth him good. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did, not, did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan, even to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established, established to be a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Shiloh. I have here in the notes the Messiah or rest. I wonder if that's what the name Shiloh means, Messiah or rest. If you want to know what the word of the Lord is, it's, it's all in, uh, it's in the Messiah. <laughs> it's in Jesus Christ. And, uh, yeah, Lord has healed me up since that time of just, now I'm just looking for anything, a little drop of anointing, and I just go running with it, and I splash it on people. I want them to, here's another story that I've told in my other videos, but there was this demon-possessed guy yelling at these girls, like, love your mother, and you can tell oh, there's a demon spirit, because I can feel the shaky, shaky in the atmosphere, that demon spirit, and I'm like, go! Oh! What do you want to do about this? This car is irritating me. And uh, then the presence of God comes for one second. Tell him I love him. And then the presence of God is gone again. And I had a decision to make. Well, do I obey the spirit of fear of going over and telling this guy that Jesus says that he loves you? Or do I obey the Lord? And I'm wrestling. God, is this is this you? Like, I don't feel the presence. But it could have just been my own thoughts. You know, I'm still growing. <laughs> Come on, you've wrestled with, is this the Lord or not, right? You know, even even the guy, who was that? Uh, God, if this is you talking to me, let the ground be moist. If this is you talking to me, let the ground be dry. That guy there. Uh, even Jeremiah. We, like, we still, like, we're learning to hear the voice of the Lord constantly. And, uh, but uh, what I've found out is when the presence shows up and he speaks, that's the Lord. 
If it's just something in my mind, it could just be me. There's usually the substance and the the peace. Whoa, <laughs> the Prince of Peace. So, anyways, I said to God, you know, and then He answered me with with one second of His presence in the words, "Tell Him I love Him." And I'm, I look at the guy, and this fear just strikes me. And Samuel feared to tell him. The fear comes like to block you from speaking the word of the Lord. And I, I feel this like if I tell him that Jesus says that He loves you, He's gonna punch me in the face. Who knows if He has a knife? He might even stab me in the neck, and I could die. And all this fear of my own life starts coming upon me. And then so I'm like, I like, and I and I and I see him getting off the sky train thing that we're on. And like, I'm gonna obey God. And I, I go running off the train. It wasn't even my stop. And I'm walking, and he's about like maybe ten or so feet over. And I, I'm walking towards him, and but I'm close to him, getting closer and closer to him. And I see him glance at me, and I, he keeps walking. And I put my hand on his shoulder, and I said, "Sir, Jesus says that He loves you." And he turns around, and tears stream down his cheeks. I thought I was going to get punched in the face. Tears come streaming down his face. He said, "When you said that, it was like an angel spoke to me." I said, "Well, that's Jesus, and He says that He loves you." Because he's revealed himself to you, you need to get born again. And I led that man to Jesus right in the, the station there. And I took him up, and I, and I, I bought him a meal, and we sat down, and I explained the gospel to him, to the best of my ability at that time. I, you know, I, sat, I bought him some food, and I sat with him. I told him about Jesus, man. And it felt so good to see. The love of God cast out that spirit of fear, that unconditional love of God that doesn't seek itself, but it seeks for the others to be built up. If you walk in the Father's unconditional love, you will never fail. It's selfless love. It's so pure. It's ew. it's out of this world, <laughs> and it will make you. You will f- sense fear sometimes. But sometimes you need to just step through the fear and pull others out of the hellfire and right into heaven's arms, into Jesus' arms. And it does take faith. It does take risk because I could have died. I could have got stabbed in the neck. If God didn't show up, I, I might have died. But it was really the word of the Lord because the spirit of the Lord was there to back up the word of the Lord. And... Uh, yeah, so all these things, love will heal you. Love will heal the nations. The, the love of God, not human love. That's 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 nice. It's fluffy. It's cute, but it seems like it's it's like the love of God with lipstick on it. It's like no, it's like it's like almost like fear with lipstick on it to make it look like love. So to, <laughs> it's a better analogy. Because the unconditional love of God, it is, it is the strongest force in all the universe, in all of nature. It can take the hardest war, demon-possessed, criminal tattoos and broken teeth from fighting, and just make them crumple to the ground with tears streaming down their face. Because that's what everybody who has ever lived on this planet is looking for. The love of God. That passes knowledge, passes understanding, passes. If you want purpose, apart from the love of God, there is no purpose. You'll just fill yourselves full of idols, dead idols that only that don't. They give you temporary satisfaction, but it never fulfills you. Right where it counts, where the life flows from, out of the heart, flows the issues of life. I asked God years ago, like, what's the purpose of life? And we clearly know that it is love, because without love, you get just making all the money in the world, have all the money in the world. Then what are you going to do with that money? Keep filling yourselves full of idols. But if you have the unconditional love, you can use that money to help clothe people who don't have clothes. You'll use it to build others up. Because love doesn't seek itself; it seeks for the others to be built up and edified. 
Who knows what you would do with the money? All the money in the world. I want God once came to me and said, ask me anything, Chris. And it's like Holy Spirit was sort of hovering around me. I know he's in me, but he was like just kind of hovering, swooping around. I feel his presence and he would just kind of go somewhere. I don't know, like he's playing hide and go seek or something. Like he's trying to tap me on the, like he's trying to get my attention. It's like, Chris, ask me anything and I'll give it to you. I'm like thinking, wow. And you think all the money in the world, I could have like a wife tomorrow, I could have all the music, all the guitars I want, I could have the best, I could have all the video games ever made, I could have anything, like I could have the fastest car, I could be the best musician, songwriter, rock star in the world. I'm going through all that my mind is like, woo, anything. And I was very selfish at this time too. That's why I was thinking all these things that I could have. And I started thinking, well, what would, what would Jesus, you know, Jesus would want the whole world to be saved. And so maybe I, maybe I ask God for my whole family to get saved. Uh, maybe I'll ask God for, to save my enemies. Maybe I'm just, I'm just mauling over. What, what could I ask God? And as I mauled over all these things, the greatest thing that I could ask for myself that could edify the entire world, I said, God, I got it. God, I just want to be your friend. Of God, who was hovering around you, boom! He just exploded in my heart. And, whoa. I didn't want anything but Him. I didn't want, I could have walked in signs and wonders, power, miracle, raise the dead, cast out, de- and I do cast out devil, but, but you know, in, all in all, here, what I want is what I'm going to have there. I want to be your friend, God. I want to just walk with you in the cool of the day. And I want to walk with you in the heat of the battle. I want to walk with you in bliss. And when all the arrows are flying with me, flying towards me, hitting me, just, oh, oh, oh. You will never leave me or forsake me because I'm your friend. I want to walk with you. And I, I just buckled in tears. It was a, it was a, the greatest thing that I could think of is to walk with God, <laughs> is to be God's friend. He reveals His secrets to His friends. Just to lean against His chest and hear the rhythm of heaven. Just to feel physically. Like my heart and flesh cry out for the living God. I just want to feel the rhythm of heaven. I want to feel the love of God. I want to release the rivers of living water upon all those who come around me as an overflow of my relationship with walking with you. And then he started revealing himself to me. He revealed himself to Samuel by the word of the Lord. He revealed himself to me just by infinite unconditional love and he would send me to these dark places to shine Jesus into the area and I and I would just I remember crying I'm like God I can't do this I'm so limited how can I reveal you the God of glory and you said I've only seen this much of you like a puddle and I'm supposed to reveal you to all these people in darkness. It's just like little boy Samuel opened up the house, opened up the doors to the Lord, fling wide the heavenly gates. The King of Glory will come in. It's not about you being seen or about me being seen. It's about Him being seen. It's about when people read you, they read a living epistle of Jesus Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory, and that manifest glory touches them 
and just knocks the demons off of them so that they can taste and see that God is real and God is love. And uh, so I, I would get frustrated. I would drive people into wheelchairs and in my strength and come on, heal them, Jesus. And they didn't get healed. Other times they do get healed. But when I did it out of so I would try to uh, arrogance, pride, it never worked. But when I do whatever I see my father doing, the power was released and they would get healed. They would get saved. They would get delivered. When I obey what the Spirit is saying, not just what I create in my own mind, I would see what the Spirit's doing manifest into the natural through power. I would see people get saved. I would see people get healed. I would even pray for myself and I get healed. Because it's not, it's not me doing the healing. It's just trusting Him. And trust comes through when you step out in faith and you see the power of God manifest. That you're like, wow, if He did it then, He'll do it again. That's why it was written that you were to set, meditate on these words day and night. And, the, and you know some of the fair, the religious leader, leaders, they would take the words literally. They get these phylacteries, and they would tie these boxes with the scriptures inside it, have it in front of their head. <laughs> Man, try to do in the natural what we are to do in the spirit in our heart. We are to meditate on it to see the substance of the spirit of God. What He did then, He can do now, and He will do again. Oh man. Kind of funny. It feels really good in here. I don't know if you guys didn't feel that peace or not. Um, it did not feel this way about two hours ago or so. <laughs> it actually felt really, really oppressive and demonic because uh, I guess my neighbors are struggling with uh, demons because they're not, they're not, they're pre-Christians. We'll just call them that. And uh, so we have to worship and to open the heavens so that they can experience. That veil is taken away in Christ. And if it worked for Paul and Silas, it could work here. If the other little boats that were on the water where Jesus said, Peace be still, and the other boats that were on the water received the same peace and the same stillness just by being in the vicinity of the disciples who were in the vicinity of Jesus in the boat, I'm pretty sure they received the same peace, the atmosphere. Ugh. You know, first in Jerusalem, then to the outer parts of the world. First in the temple, the Holy Spirit, full of peace, then fill the room with peace. Right now, I have this area right here. It's like a portal that sometimes it opens up for four days straight where the presence of God, you can step in and you can step out. You can step in the portal and you get blocked and then you can step out, go to the kitchen table, have some food, and then go back in the presence of God. Just by, it's just open there. This, that this is where I worship. And this is where I do my, uh, I type my Facebook posts when I get whacked and something just jumps out, out of, you know, out of the scriptures or out of my, in my spirit. And so why not have an open heaven in your whole house? And if you can get it in your whole house, why not the whole block? And if you can open it up for your whole block, why not the whole city? <laughs> if you're going to open up in your whole city, why not the whole province or whole state? <laughs> if you can open up in the whole province or state, why not the whole country? <laughs> if you can open up in that head, why not the whole world? The whole earth will be full of knowledge of the glory of the Lord. And if there's revelation knowledge, there's going to be experience. Guaranteed. Hallelujah. Well, I think I'm done here. I'm seeing flashes of light. Those are usually angels. <laughs> so... Oh, thank you, thank you, Lord, for sending the angels to fight the battle and whatever. Anyways, um, wow. <laughs> May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ increase your righteousness so you can, he can pour through you like rivers of living water. I know I need to be growing in that, and so do you, until our face just rips off and Jesus comes walking right through his body perfectly. Hallelujah. <laughs>